stop all the clocks. Cut off the telephone. Prevent the dog from barking with a juicy bone. Silence the pianos and with muffled drum, bring out the coffin, let the mourners come. Let airplanes circle, moaning overhead, scribbling on the sky, the message. He is dead. Someone has lost something or someone as well. I lost my dad a couple years ago and he wasn't the best person, but I loved him, he was my dad. And I still grieve to this day. Everyone grieves, crying is normal. Feelings are normal. It's just a part of the grieving process. In all these poems, you will see how people grieve differently. My first poem is Funeral Blues by W.H. Auden. Put crept bows around the white necks of public doves. Let the traffic policemen wear black cotton gloves. He was my north, my south, my east and west, my working week, my Sunday rest. My noon, my midnight, my talk, my song. I thought that love would last forever. I was wrong. The stars are not wanted now. Put out every one. Pack up the moon and dismantle the sun. Pour away the ocean and sweep up the wood. For nothing now can ever come to any good. When we're little, our pain perception is different from now. So when we're little, we think we're dying. And we're really not. In this poem, you will see that just because you feel a certain way doesn't mean it's going to last forever in Making a Fist by Naomi Nye. For the first time on the road north of Tampico, I felt the life sliding out of me, a drum in the desert harder and harder to hear. I was seven. I lay in the car watching palm trees swirl, a sickening pattern past the glass. My stomach was a melon split wide inside my skin. How do I know if I'm going to die? I asked my mother. We had been traveling for days. With strange confidence, she answered, when you no longer can make a fist. Years later, I smile to think of the journey, the borders we must cross separately stamped with our unanswerable woes. I, who did not die, who am still living, still lying in the back seat behind all my questions, clenching and opening one small hand. Everybody has questions about death. Where do we go? What is it like? You know, all that. And in this poem, The Night Where You No Longer Live by Megan O'Rourke, you will see different questions. Was it like lifting a veil and was the grass treacherous, the green grass? Did you think of your own mother? Was it like a virus? Did the software flicker? And was this the beginning? Was it like that? Was there gas station food and was it a long trip? And is there sun there? Or drones or punishment or growth? Was it a blackout? And did you still create me? And what was I like on the first day of my life? Were we two from the start or was our time an entrance or an ending? Did we stand in the heated room? Did we look at the painting? Did the snow appear cold? Were our feet red with it, with the wet snow? And then what were our names? Did you love me or did I misunderstand? Is it terrible? Do you intend to come back? Do you hear, hear the world's keening? Will you stay the night? People look at memorials, especially the Vietnam Veterans Memorial, and think, dang, what was it like back then? And you will see how it was for some people and facing it by Yusa. My black face fades hiding inside the black granite. I said I wouldn't, damn it, no tears. I'm stone, I'm flesh. My clouded reflection eyes me like a bird of prey, a profile of night slanted against morning. I turn this way, the stone lets me go. I turn that way, I'm inside the Vietnam Veterans Memorial again, depending on the light to make a difference. I go down the five, 5,822 names, half expecting to find my own in letters like smoke. I touch the name, Andrew Johnson. I see the booby trap's white flash, name shimmering on a woman's blouse. 
but when she walks away, the names stay on the wall. Brush strokes flash. A red bird's wing cutting across my stair. The sky, a plane in the sky. A white vet's image floats. <sighs> then his pale eyes look through mine. I'm a window. He's lost his right arm inside the stone. In the black mirror, a woman's trying to erase names. No, she's brushing a boy's hair. When we grieve, sometimes we'll let it consume us. In this poem, you'll see how he doesn't let it consume him. He looks at the brighter aspects of life. In Sorrow Is Not My Name by Ross Gay. No matter the pool towards brink, no matter the floor deep sleep awaits, there is a time for everything. Look, just this morning, a vulture nodded his red grizzled head at me and I looked at him, admiring the sickle of his beak when the wind kicked up. And after arranging that good suit of feathers, he up and took off, just like that. And to boot, there are on this planet alone something like two million natural occurring sweet things, some with names so generous as to kick the steel from my knees. A gay person. Persimmon. Stick ball, the purple okra I bought for two bucks at the market. Think of that. The long night, the skeleton in the mirror, the man behind me on the bus taking notes. Yeah. Yeah. But look, my niece is running through a field, calling my name. My neighbor sings like an angel, and at the end of my block is a basketball court. I remember. My color's green. I'm spring. People grieve over more than just people death. Like wildfires, people grieve over the trees that have died. And in this poem, in Blackwater Woods by Mary Oliver, you see that she grieves over the trees. Look, the trees are turning their own bodies into pillars of light, are giving off the rich fragrance of cinnamon and fulfillment. The long tapers of cattails are bursting and floating away over the blue shoulders of the ponds, and every pond, no matter what it is, name is, is nameless now. Every year, everything I have ever learned in my lifetime leads back to this. The fires in the black river of loss, whose other side is salvation, whose meaning none of us will ever know. To live in this world, you must be able to do three things. To love what is mortal, to hold it against your bones, knowing your own life depends on it. And when the time comes to let it go, to let it go.